Welcome to the second episode of the project team, How Construction Works. Today we're going to be starting to get into the traditional design bid build delivery system. Hi, my name is Chris Conkle and welcome to my channel. This channel is all about helping you master construction so that you can become an industry leader. Today we're going to be starting into the traditional design bid build delivery system. Now, this is just the beginning. Uh, we'll be breaking these down in the next, ep next few episodes. We'll be breaking this all down. But just to get started, let's get familiar with the actual, just the, the basic matrix of the uh, traditional design bid build delivery system. This is the most widely used type of contract still today. It was first, it first came into the scene in the uh, late 1800s. And um, before uh, this, was before the this type of contract came out the was, everything was done under uh, one master builder right which is that's just something of the past um during i think it was the miller act of 1935 um that changed a lot of things so that gave that made contractors uh if the build was say over a hundred thousand dollars on capital projects they would have to get what's called a performance bond, a bid bond, a performance bond, labor materials bond, um, which we will be getting into bonding uh, much, much further down. But uh, uh, for now, let's just stick it with this. Um, it's been around since the late 1800s, the most popular, widely used contract still even today. The owner will pay for the work, for one, will supply the site the, for construction, and we'll also provide the contractor with the documents. So the documents uh, will outline what, like the entire project for the contractor. The architect administrates the contract as an agent for the owner. On top of the architect uh, providing the, like the design, the documents, and administrating the, the construction process, they also provide clarifications to to the contractor right so clarifications on those documents right so they're there um uh, you know for clarification contractor is going to supply all the labor and material uh to build the project they're also going to uh, provide like the sequencing the job sequencing the project sequencing uh it's gonna the contractor is also going to um uh deliver like you know arrange the methods and practice like the methods for delivering uh, like what equipment, oh. the equipment, and, and the contractor, the contractor is responsible for paying for everything inside of the con, uh, inside of the, of the construction project, right? So the owner doesn't pay, directly pay the subcontractors or whatever. The contractor is responsible for the everything so the the, con the owner pays the contractor one payment and the contractor takes that one payment and then divides it up between like the equipment labor materials all that stuff all the subcontractors all the rentals all that stuff right so um the owner isn't responsible for paying for you know directly paying for uh, equipment and labor and stuff like that so um that is the responsibility of the contractor so uh the contractor will put in what's called progress payments the architect will um, confirm that that work has been done and the owner will issue payment. Okay, we have an owner who has an idea who needs something built. They have a need. Usually it's a, it's a facility that will help them make uh, more profit in, in, their, in their field of business, right? So the owner has a... There's two types of relationships in this whole um arrangement and, and one is the direct relationships right the uh, or privity of contract or the indirect relationships the agency type of relationships so the owner will enter into an agreement with the architect right to design the um, the building to for to like studies design uh, the construction documents the contract documents so the owner Owner will go into a direct relationship, a contractual, like or privity of contract relationship with the arch with the architect. That form AIA, remember the American Institute of Architects, uh, form B one forty one, will be that document. Now the uh, owner has no relationship with the subconsultants who would be engineers and 
people like that, right? The architect enters into a contract with the sub, sub consultants, and that's an other contract, which we'll be getting into the, um, the next episode. But for now, I just wanted to get you guys familiar with the, the just the basic matrix of, the, of this delivery system, right? Um, after the documents have been completed, the, the project will go out to tender, the contractors, contractors will bid this job and the winning contractor will enter into usually the lowest priced contract uh, contractor. Usually the contractor who puts in the lowest price will win, uh, but that's not necessarily the case all the time because there's many qualifications, right? So as long as they, qual they qualify and they have the best price, then they'll get that contract. So the owner will enter into a direct uh, contract with the contractor for the construction of the project based on the construction documents. Now there's different contracts that, that, you know, different contracts that they can enter into based on the pricing. So there's lump sum pricing, which is uh, one price for all. The cost plus a fee, which is um, usually used when there's gonna be unforeseen uh, elements in the, in, in the build. Something usually will happen in the in like during the project uh, that will require a cost plus a fee so what that is is um the it'll cover the cost of labor and materials and it'll also cover overhead uh, indirect and direct costs so it'll include profit as well so uh, the cost plus with a guaranteed match price is a hybrid of the lump sum and the cost plus a fee so what that means is at the end of the, the that portion of the work when it's completed the owner and the contractor agree to split the savings okay so the unit price contract which is used mainly in civil engineering projects like bridges and tunnels and stuff like that um, is exactly what it says there will be um, a value a table of values and um, the owners will have that information and they'll decide what parts or what what the t what portions of that work that they want the contractor to do based on their unit rates now the unit price contract is used in other areas but just for now that's that's basically it right so we have uh owner architect sub consultants there's no contractual relationship between the owner and sub consultants or owner and subcontractors Okay, so for example, if a subconsultant makes a boo-boo or a subcontractor makes a boo-boo, the owner will go after the architect for damages, right? We'll be going after them for them for money lost, right? Um, same thing. If a subcontractor makes a makes a mistake, the owner will go after the contractor for compensation, and then it's up to the contractor to go after the subcontractor. For that compensation and same thing the architect will go after the after the sub consultant for compensation so you can see this is just the basic outline and it's already getting a little confusing so that's why i've decided to break it down to a bunch of short videos explaining each each part uh, the next episode we're going to be going into the owner's matrix and what's going on there uh, then we'll be going then at the later at the next episode of that i'll be going into the architect's matrix uh, and then the contractor's matrix inside of the uh, design bid build, the traditional delivery system. And then I'll be doing a final video on the process of information, like the flow of information, how, it, how that works. Um, because there's a lot of things going on here. But let me know down in the comments if you have any questions at all. I'll gladly answer your questions. Um, there's a lot going on here and this is, you know, this is just the start. So I don't want to miss anything. So let me know if you think I, I missed something, uh, so I can add it into the next video. Um, yeah, this is uh, very, very cool stuff guys. Um, this is, uh, this is, this is what, uh, if you're studying for your PMP certification, now we're starting to get into the nitty gritty of it, right? Make sure you guys join me every Sunday morning at, uh, 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time Edmonton for my live streams. If you're new to Chris Conkle Vlogs, make sure you subscribe right down below. YouTube thinks you might like this video behind me here, so give it a watch. This is Chris. Bye for now, everyone.